My name is Ashantin and welcome to Vintage Story and my single player world. Today I am going to set up a cellar which specialises in pressing fruit and distilling fruit, honey and flour into wine, mead and ale. So first things first, let's build some equipment. Now the cellar I have set up is in here and I have kept the whole look of it really clean. It's made of chiseled limestone rocks and yes it does operate as a cellar. So the first thing we want is a fruit press. So let's have a look in here. I've got my equipment for the fruit press lined up and this I hope is going to be the right configuration. If not, we'll look it up under H for help. So let's come through here. Let's put the hammer and the chisel. Does this give us a fruit press? It does. So there we go, one fruit press. And if we come over here, we need to put it right there. I'm giving myself a little bit of room around it. Now the other thing we will need is an empty bucket. Let me just go and get an empty bucket. Once you have your empty bucket, just place it there between the legs of the fruit press. Then we are ready to press fruit. Now I have already set up a whole line of barrels because we are going to put our pressed fruit juice into the barrels. One of the things that has changed, I'm now in 1.16.4, release candidate two, is that now fruit juice does age and it does go off. This is why I am building this whole thing in a cellar. So we have our fruit press ready to go. I've got some honey here ready to go. And the other thing that we will need if we make ale is water. So I have placed a well in the corner here so that the water is freely available to this cellar. The next thing we will need are some berries. Now I am in a very, very warm area. So if I look at this, you can see that I'm actually in November, but this is when my berry bushes flower. So what we're gonna do is just clear the bar, for a little bit and let's gather some berries. Now I grow my berries in terraces and so I've got them uh, the opposite of vineyards. Vineyards of course would be grown vertically up a hillside but I'm growing these across a hillside and I'm growing them on the hillside um, specifically so that um, they will get a little bit cooler air than down in the valley and that means they are more likely to flower and to fruit earlier. Through the whole of the summer they don't fruit because it's too hot for them here uh, but these are my winter crop. Uh, I'm not yet at the stage where I've got fruit trees at a sufficient level of maturity to give me fruit so we're going to use berries instead. Now to press fruit we need a minimum of 16 berries which we have of course. So let's come over here and go down into our cellar. This is all work in progress at the moment. Let's come in this way. I'm going to shut these gates because we're in a time of high rift activity and you'll probably have realized that I'm building this in survival. Just to be clear, if you look above me at the top sign in the fruit press there is a minimum of 16 fruit as I've mentioned but there's a maximum of 32. Also when we want to press fruit we right click on this bar so you right click on this bar to press the fruit until it's completely pressed but then if you want to unscrew 
the pressing mechanism, you right click again. So both mechanisms are a right click. So we come into our cellar and then we just stand in front of the fruit press and we right click, hold it, hold it. Is it, will it take any more? One more, there we go. I think that's as much as it will take. Mash produces 10 litres of juice. So we are going to compress this down, hold it down. Now there was a bug where it only produced 9.98 litres. Has that bug been solved? I'm watching in the top bar the number of litres. We are up to 1.3 litres, 1.19, 9 9.89 litres of blackcurrant juice. Right, so that bug has not been fixed yet. We need to pull the screw up and out of that we are going to get dry blackcurrant mash. This is what's left after the pressing in the bucket is the black currant juice so we just pop that in there and we have 9.8 liters of black currant juice now the new thing with this release candidate is you can see that this is only fresh for 26 days so let's pop this back underneath let's take our next batch of fruit oh <laughs> And then we will, yeah, we haven't quite got enough here. Let's press it down. We haven't got the full 10 litres, it doesn't matter. Let's press it down, hold it down. So it's going to produce four, three, two. You can see it's building up in the bucket. It shows you how much mash and how much fruit juice in the bucket. Are we all finished? We are. Let's pull the screw up. Pull the mash out, lift up the bucket, and then we will put it. The mash that we produce, it only feeds pigs. You have to put it in a large trough, and it goes in in multiples of two. The other thing you can do, apart from using the bucket, oops, wrongly placed, apart from using the bucket under here, is you can use a jug, but the bucket holds 10 litres of fruit juice. The jug only holds three. So if you're only squeezing a small amount of fruit juice, you can keep putting different jugs underneath to catch it, but you will get some waste. Now, the other thing you can use the jug for is you can fill it with fruit juice and as you will see, it has three litres of black currant juice in there and you can drink all three litres of juice. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Let's put the jug back down there. So that's how you can drink your juice. So we have some animal fodder, which we can use and when it's light, we will go and feed our animals. There is an advantage in storing fruit in barrels as fruit juice. If you look at this, it says fresh for 7.5 days. Whereas if we look at this fruit juice, it says fresh for 25.6 days. That's a considerable advantage. So in my view, it's worth pressing the fruit juice just for this increase in the um, freshness of the fruit before it rots. So I think that is a plus as a starter. Now the wiki has a chilling sentence that says that as of update 1.16.4, juice and cider will both decay. And it says the only option for long-term storage is to process the juice first into cider and then into once distilled alcohol. However, in this process, all fruit nutrition value 
as well as some of the saturation will be lost. So it's telling you that there is virtually no value in the uh, distillation into wine. There's also a big, you know, deficit in that if you drink the wine, you will become drunk, which is not ideal on vintage story. However, I am a very optimistic person and I have suggested to the developers that the, we should be able to sell wine to the traders. And talking of the winemaking process, let's make a still. Now, one of the first things we need to make is some solder. You can make it, again, this is one of these things, uh, if you look in help, and if we look at the um, fruit, it's a very, very difficult thing to grasp here. The, the boiler is crafted quite easily, but this solder, um, when you look at silver solder, it's fine, but you can also get another type of solder. You can get lead solder. So you can use silver or you can use lead. Let's see if we can make some lead solder. First of all, let's light this up. And I have here the recipe is basically one to one, casserite to lead. So let's pop this in here. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's going to make one ingot. I will come back to you when it has cooked. Okay. We have molten lead solder. Let's go and pour this out. There we go. Now we will need more than one. In fact, I have written down how many I'll need downstairs. So we're going to need five there and one here. Now in the meantime, we need to make a solder iron. So if we look in here, the solder iron is a copper chisel or a chisel and a stick. And this makes a solder iron. Now the durability is 625, so we ought to be able to do both with this. So looking at this, I'm gonna need five solder bars and five copper plates. I have already made the five copper plates. And this one, I'm gonna need two solder bars and two plates. So I need another seven solder bars. Let me go and make those and I will come back to you when this one has sufficiently cooled to work. Right, welcome back guys. My solder is now cold enough to work with and if I put a saw here this makes five solder bars so I have a lot more lead solder than I need I've taken the opportunity to make a lot more so we have five solder bars and we ought to be able to make the first part of the still so let's have a look at this now we need a soldering iron, five copper bars, and five lead solder bars. Let's see how we got on with that. Let's look it up under here, just to make sure that we know that we're doing the right thing. Let's make the boiler first. So the pattern is five, one, and like that. Okay, we can do that. So this comes here. Our five solder bars go here. And then we want one, two, one, two, one. And we have this beautiful boiler. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> one of the reasons for making these things is because you can. All right, let's pop it down there. Perfect. Now, the next thing we need to do, of course, 
is to make the condenser. Now the condenser, we need two solder bars, two copper plates and a soldering iron. And my soldering iron is still intact, which is pretty good going. I'm liking that. So let's have a look at our bars. Are they cold enough yet? They're not. I'll come back to you when they're cold enough. Right guys, that bar is now cold enough to cut up into solder. Perfect, we don't need all five. We just need two of them. Right, and let's just check on the pattern again. Why not? So we're coming down to the brewing and distilling. Here we go. Condenser is what we want, yes. So, one of those, two solder, and two plates. And there it is. I'm almost surprised with this one that we don't actually need to have a, a log with it because I would have thought if we put this here. <laughs> no. Okay, you have to, we have to stand behind this to place it. So let's put here, there, and that should be a good link. Right, so we have our boiler and we have our condenser. Now, to work the boiler, we have to put some firewood and uh, a fire underneath and fire does not affect the effectiveness of cellars. What affects it is leaving the door open and sunlight, but fires do not affect it. Right, I've had a bit of a problem trying to get the fire under here and I was pressing shift. If you press control, the fire goes underneath with no problems. So, a simple trick, but when you want to place it, press control. So, we have the fire under here. Now, according to this area here, where we come into the brewing and distilling, um, fill the boiler with up to 30 litres of fermented alcohol and light a fire under the boiler. Now, the boiler can only be fueled with firewood. Place a bucket under the condenser spout. Fill the condenser with water and build a fire pit under the boiler. So, we need another bucket. Right, I have a bucket under the spout, which has worked very well. And I, you just press under the edge of this spout. I now need to fill the condenser. Clearly, 10 litres of water will fill the condenser. Okay, and then we need the alcohol. I was lucky, I had some more white currants. So let's get that up to the full amount. Let me get some of this off my bar. Right, now let's try to press this again. It looks brilliant with the white currants going down. Hold that down till we get the nine point. There we go. Yep takes time to wring every last drop out. There we are, 13, got it. Let's lift that up, take this. Now we've got black currant juice, cranberry juice, and wow, white currant juice, look at that. Let's put this back under here, oops. Uh, is there any chance? What am I pressing? Uh, control is what I need to press. Could I do just a few more? Uh, let's get the mash out first. Because I wonder... There we go. Okay. Let's press it down. It's not going to make as much but it is going to make something. 
Here we go, 2.1. There we come. 5.9. Let's take that. I love the, the white currant juice. I've had a real problem in that I've got 9.89 litres of cranberry juice, but when I click this, it won't seal. And the answer is that it won't seal if you have two decimal places. You have to get down to one decimal place. So we need to move this into these barrels one litre at a time. Control. One litre. Press control. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, let's just check on the barrel. We have nine litres. Now, I could put the 0.8 in. I'm not going to. So that turns into nine litres of cranberry wine after seven days of sealing. Let's do it. And we'll do the same. Now, we've got some cranberry juice left over 8.9 liters of cranberry juice okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that in a jug and have i still got some in empty nope i've drunk my juice which is great which just shows you that we're going to need an empty bucket here all the time now let's do the white wine juice We've got 15 litres of that. So let us press control and we can go up to nine litres. Right, let's come and get some more. Right, how much have I got? Let me just check in this barrel. I've got 6.79, so we want six more. So press control. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Move it to the seal position. 15 litres seal. That's a lot of white wine. Now, the rest of this juice um, that I've got in here, I've just got a little bit in there. I'm just going to leave it there because then when I run short of food, I can come and drink this. Now, we have to wait for this. But in the meantime, what we could do is make some ale. Well, we have our fruit juice fermenting into wine behind us, but berries and fruit from fruit trees are not the only things that we can use to make alcohol. So I have put 10 litres of water in this barrel and I'm going to take 10 of the flour that I have here. I'm going to hopefully add it to here and it will turn into two liters of spelt ale. So 10 flour and 10 of the water turn into two liters of spelt ale. So let's Shall we go for that or shall we go for more? Because we could go to 50 and 50. Let's just do that and see how we go. Now, the other thing that we haven't... Ooh, I need white currant juice. Right, come here. Let's grab you and drink you. <laughs> This jug is so useful. So we have an empty barrel and I want to put in 9.7. I want to, I want to put it in one litre, two, three. I want a whole number. Nine litres of honey. Right, that will do. Let's pop that down there. Okay, and we don't have to add anything to this. So we turn into nine liters of mead after 14 days of sealing. So we now have not just the wine 
that is coming up we to fermented wine we also have honey which is going to make mead and we've got flour and water which is going to make ale and then we've got 15 litres of white currant juice there so we have many many options for making alcohol I will come back to you when some of this has got a little bit further time has passed and we actually have some wine so here we have 15 litres of white currant wine, 9 litres of cranberry wine, our mead is still cooking up and our ale is still cooking up. So let's grab one of the empty buckets. It's got honey in it. All right, now let's get some wine. That's 10 litres. Now we need to fill that 10 litres of white currant wine. Let's put the rest in. Another five litres. Right, let's pop it in there. So we've got 15 litres of white wine. We've got 10 litres of water, an empty bucket. And now we will light this fire. Good. So we have the boiler. We have the 15 litres of white wine and you can see the temperature going up. And presumably it will boil when it gets to 100 degrees, I would have thought. Right, 80 degrees. Oh, oh, oh. Right, we are already distilling. Gosh, I love that mechanic. Look at that, guys. Isn't that brilliant? Oh, I see. It's telling me how much of the white wine. Yes, temperature 100 degrees. And you can see that we started with 15 litres of white wine. And it's telling you that the number that we have already distilled. Now, obviously, we can't add more far to the more forward to this i have heard so we will just wait till it distills as much as it can right and the water is telling us how much it is we don't know how much is in the bucket but we are getting alcohol now i do have a spare chest here for when we have alcohol so let's see how this gets on fuel for 7.3 hours but that seems to be going a lot faster than that because we've gone down four litres already. I doubt if we'll have to wait for the whole of that. I'll come back to you when we're a bit further down the line. Well, the boiler is empty. Apparently we have fuel for 4.2 hours. The fire is still going, but we've distilled everything. This we have distilled. We have 9.27 litres of water. And as far as I can see, that is finished. And that has gone down to 1.5 litres of wine, white currant wine. And that's about right, actually. So it means that if we start with 15 litres of wine, we end up with 1.5 litres of white currant brandy. Let's pop it in there. Yep, 1.5 litres. And I don't, we can, I believe, distill this further. If we seal it, I don't think we need to. Does it give us how long it will stay? No, it doesn't. Right, so we've made our first brandy. So we are now well into making alcohol. And I just think that mechanic, like all the mechanics on Vintage Story, is absolutely terrific. I really, really like the whole thing. So 
I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and maybe pick up a few hints. If you've liked it, leave a like, consider subscribing to me. Bye bye.